Hello, I am Zev Skládanka and I'm going to tell you a bit about the Fedora package dashboard. It all started as an idea by Miro Hronchok, proposed in December 2019 on the devil list. He scouted interest for landing page of sorts for the Fedora packagers, where he would collect some data about the packagers and presented them in a reasonably structured fashion. He also attached a mock-up to the email, so you can now feast your eyes on the original. And since Miro had no actual interest in developing the web application, V, as in Fedora QA, approached him and offered to take the project off his hands and make it a reality. This decision was based on a couple of factors. First of all, we already had a general QA landing page in the works, and the way we developed the backend for it, uh, we could easily use some of the data it already provided uh, and adding more to it in order to accommodate for the new page was quite easy since the original design of the backend or Oracle, as we call it, is quite modular. And uh, we designed it with this, or not this specifically, but some of, something like this in mind already. So we could expand it on the fly, basically. And we also believe that uh, having some tool for packagers has a direct impact on the community and once again, we as a Fedora QA feel that our mission is to be the take, uh, caretakers, enablers, and maybe a catalyst. Uh, so we hoped, we hoped on the chance to make our community members' lives a bit easier, hopefully. And we implemented the Fedora package dashboard and we are now running it instead of Miro. Our main goal for the dashboard is, uh, as I already said, making the life of Bekju easier. What does it mean? We wanted to put together a set of information relevant to the packagers from the various sources. Uh, you'd have to be manually checking on a regular fashion otherwise, for example, you'd be checking Bugzilla for bugs, uh, Pegir for new pull requests, uh, Bode for updates, uh, stuff like that. Uh, that obviously takes some time and it also takes uh, uh, some regular uh, work that you need to spend browsing all the different systems. Uh, we decided that we'll be downloading uh, or grabbing the data from all the sources with boil down the information, filter what's important, and uh, we would also cache uh, what we've downloaded, uh, because some of the services tend to be slow sometimes, like I'm not pointing to Bugsy or Pegir, but you know it for yourself. And the information uh, we store is also uh, relevant sometimes to more than one person because we not we don't only uh, create uh, the dashboards for people but also for uh, package groups so you can imagine that if we uh, queried all the sources ad hoc it would be next to unusable so figure out the caching was quite some pain, as you can probably imagine, but uh, we believe it was absolutely worth it because now we have the data stored in a uh, readable JSON format and we can transform it to whatever we need at the moment. With the page itself, with the dashboard, uh, we felt that it uh, needs to be responsive and fast, obviously and that uh, shouldn't that it shouldn't be too cluttered with information because still even if we only show uh, what's relevant say we don't show pull requests that uh, are quite new or we maybe 
show you only bugs with uh, some severity that you can configure. Uh, we believe that you as a packager should be able to filter it further down. So we also included uh, additional filtering uh, on top of the data that we've already pre-crunched for you. Uh, we'll show that in the live demo afterwards. But uh, we believe that these things together are a recipe for success and that we are not only making the life of packages a bit easier, but we may be also lowering the entry barrier a bit because uh, now you don't necessarily need to know about all the bits and bobs and pieces of information that you need to collect as a packager. You can, with this in mind, only hop to the dashboard and see what's going on. And based on the initial feedback we got, I think that we hit just the right buttons. So here's some of it, so we can read it for ourselves. We are especially happy for Kevin's, this is pretty awesome. And now František will take over from me and he will show you the actual product, you know, live demo. And he will also talk about what's next and maybe about some uh, implementation issues that you hit on the way and how we solve them. Hello, my name is Fantik Zatloukal and I'm going to show you a demo of Federal Package Dashboard. Then I will talk a little bit about its internals, architecture, some issues we've hit on the road and our plans with the project for the future. Let's jump to the demo. So this is the front page of Package Dashboard. It's very simple. You need just your FAS username or you can use basically any FAS username of any federal packager because we are showing, we are currently showing only public information which are available without any passwords and so on. So I'll, I'll use Miros dashboard because he has lots of stuff there. So this is uh, basically the dashboard. Uh, you can see there are pretty big number of uh, different information boxes, uh, red boxes, yellow boxes and so on. Uh, there is uh, a help page uh, for cases when you are using the dashboard and don't understand some something, some icon or some box and uh, basically anything. Uh, I'm not going to go through it completely. Uh, let's close it. So, uh, up, up here you can see number of packages, uh, yeah, your fast username, number of packages you own directly, number of packages you own through groups, and uh, number of packages that are showing you something on dashboard. Uh, if your package doesn't have any bugs, updates or anything, uh, it won't be shown, shown here at all. Mm, right uh, top right corner you can uh, see some icons uh, and numbers next to them uh, you can click on on these buttons and it will uh, filter the, filter the uh, results shown package dashboard so now i've uh, selected to show just box uh, i can enable more filtering options uh, in the options panel um, i can Hide for 32 because it's it's already pretty old and uh, old EPL. and you see uh, different number of bugs are shown here or different number of packages and bugs for them. Uh, you can also show just CVEs, which might be pretty interesting for for packagers. Uh, you can see the other other stuff is disabled because I've uh, enabled showing of bugs only. Uh, let's get back. There are various different filters. Uh, we can add more if you want. Feel free to open open issue or uh, ping us on IRC. We can add add more more stuff for 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 our filtering. Uh, you can hide for our release schedule. Uh, this was added pretty recently. We thought it might be good to have some sort of overview for for packagers 
how we are progressing towards uh, next Fedora release. Uh, so yeah, I'll reset the filters to default. Uh, other thing you can you can see here are updates for our packages. Uh, um, you can see comments, karma, and their current status or expected uh, expected time when they should hit stable. We need still to iron out some uh, cases when uh, we are not counting days properly and we are off by one, but it's not a huge huge issue. Uh, if you have the if you have disabled automatic stable push, it won't show any expected stable, obviously. And if you have enabled automatic stable push, uh, yeah, you can see see there when it should hit stable or if it should have uh, already hit the stable. Uh, this can mean that there is some negative karma or some other issue, um, especially with com Fedora Composer or basically anything. <clears throat> uh, the other interesting thing is uh, active overrides for your packages, active pull request and their uh, CI results. Uh, there can be multiple CIs, yeah, and you can see results for all of them. Uh, we will add support for more CIs if they emerge. <coughs> uh, we are fetching this data from from Bagir. Uh, yeah, hyperlink leads uh, to um, uh, to that pull request in in your list git. Uh, yeah, while I'm here, uh, this icon means that uh, you own package through group. You can uh, you can disable uh, disable showing uh, group packages on, on the dashboard if if you want. Um, uh, the other other interesting stuff is uh, fails to build. Uh, fellows in Freda health check. Uh, this is from data provided by a repo checker from Fabio Valentini, so huge kudos to him. Uh, sometimes uh, data's, uh, data from this service can be uh, different compared to, for example, Koshe. Um, for example, if we are talking about fails to build, uh, we are um, getting three different data and uh, joining them together uh, from Bugzilla, fails to build tickets, uh, trackers, uh, Koshe and uh, repo checker. The other interesting thing is uh, orphans and uh, especially if you click on drop down arrow uh, you can see when the issues began and uh, when the package might get retired according to Fedora, Fedora policies uh, about retiring, uh, retiring orphaned packages. Obviously we have some issues with styling. Uh, yeah, and down there there is a reason for uh, why, why the package is uh, impacted by, by orphan. It can either be orphaned, orphaned directly or uh, impacted uh, in a way that some of its dependencies uh, are orphaned. Uh, you can click on the, and get dependency network. This can be pretty interesting in uh, for uh, more complicated dependency sets. So you can see uh, how um, how is it how is your package impacted by some some or, or uh, some package being orphaned. Uh, this package is uh, pretty simple but there are more more complicated situations and these uh, graphs can can help a lot uh, understanding uh, the issue you can zoom in zoom out uh, and so on uh, I'll reset the filters once again uh, mm, yeah you can hide hide uh, some, some group uh, group packages uh from the dashboard completely and the other interesting and important thing well, not that much interesting is uh, to be aware that we are caching the results as Joseph said earlier and uh, sometimes there might be some issues in infrastructure or on our side since we are still currently running on temporary server 
so uh, it's best to start and uh, if you have any trouble or doubts uh, doubts about data shown there uh, you can check uh, page footer and you can see there how old uh, are the data that you are currently seeing here the page uh, updates itself automatically uh, it refreshes uh, i think uh, every 15 minutes so if there is something new you don't need to manually hit f5 and uh, and refresh the page mm. Uh, one last thing I would uh, like to mention is that yeah, you can write in uh, your packager group name and see just packages owned by the group and you can see orphan and these are just orphan packages. Um, Miro is mentioning this this page in his uh, orphan packages report in, in the emails and I think it it's pretty pretty <coughs> good uh, representation and uh, very clean and uh, easy easy option to view uh, everything that's currently orphaned in Fedora or impacted by orphans. Um, yeah. Um, the interesting thing I wanted to mention is that uh, you can obviously search in package dashboard and you can uh, use reg uh, regular expressions in, in, in the search box so I can disable Python packages and I can disable uh, Apache so you see Um, this uh, this supports um, uh, simplified regular expressions and also full uh, regular expressions, so you can you can customize customize uh, view of dashboard uh, as you wish. <clears throat> so that would be everything from demo. Let's be get back to slides or screen. So, uh, something about impl implementation details. The application uh, itself is uh, divided in two parts, backend and frontend. Uh, backend uh, is leveraging uh, Flask and Celery libraries. Uh, <coughs> we were aiming for very parallelized uh, architecture because uh, we are fetching uh, tons of data and we are fetching fetching them uh, in scheduled intervals and uh, <coughs> uh, it's tens of thousands of uh, requests requests to various services uh, the, uh, Joseph talked about before Bugzilla, Pagir uh, some of them can be un unbelievably uh, slow so we we need to be able to uh, process uh, I don't know uh, tens of workers currently we are aiming to increase the number once we finish moving uh, moving to proper server deployment in federal infrastructure yeah this is the third point here uh, fourth actually um, we we had some issues uh, with server hosting it's still currently deployed on temporary server it actually might be moved by the time that this talk uh, goes live because uh, we are pre-recording this <coughs> uh, and we are planning to deploy package dashboard into community shift but uh, then it uh, went silent and uh, uh, it was uh, uh, decommissioned, decommissioned I would say for uh, I don't know how, how long uh, it's not even even <coughs> uh, we, we don't even sh uh, know for sure that we will get something like that back so we are working with federal infrastructure team uh, to deploy uh, backend and frontend uh, into their OpenShift cluster um, they are they are very helpful, especially Pingu, with, uh, who is helping me with uh, anything I need as I'm learning 
uh, how to work with OpenShift and uh, especially uh, OpenShift and Ansible together and deploy stuff. So uh, we are working on, on that. Uh, Frontend is uh, like basically any modern web application using React or, and it's written in JavaScript and uh, it's uh, <coughs> Uh, asking uh, asking backend uh, communicating with backend with uh, API which is uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about the API side uh, here but uh, it's public uh, we basically any anybody any developer any user uh, any contributor to, to Fedora can can use the API or even talk talk to us if somebody wants to add, add something into our backend oraculum we are aiming aiming to make it uh, or even at least try to make it uh, more more used more widely used in federal world uh, um, if so if you have any any data that you uh, want to uh, some process somehow uh, have it cached, have it refreshed automatically. You can come come to us and uh, come to us and ask, uh, talk with us, and even implement implement some something as Oracle module. <clears throat> so uh, about some our future plans, uh, we are planning to. Uh, take a look at uh, Fedora CI, its uh, its API, and uh, figure out the UX and integrate integrate it all into a package dashboard because uh, it's currently used only for pull requests against your packages if you have set it up in your disk git. But uh, we think it uh, it might make sense for packages to to see uh, results from Fedora CI uh, for packages themselves and not just pull requests. Uh, we are planning to add support for Fedora float packs and modules. This got uh, stalled a bit, uh, but uh, we are planning to work on that. We are planning to take a look if there is if there are any possibilities uh, to integrate Oraculum and package dashboard into some other federal processes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we are planning to take a look uh, on authentication and show private bugs. Uh, we are planning to um, think and talk with uh, other teams in Red Hat about some possibilities to use uh, package dashboard for uh, uh, realm. Uh, <clears throat> we are obviously planning to do some optim optimizations uh, because uh, backend is uh, currently not as effective as it as it could be. Uh, we are not listening for federal messages, so we are uh, fetching all the data uh, every hour or two from body, Bugzilla, Koji, and so on, and we will we'll take a look. Uh, and use leverage federal messages uh, everywhere we can because uh, it will be obviously faster and uh, more effective use of resources. Mm, we are planning to take a look and work on faster things for first-time visitors. Uh, package dashboard uh, is uh, synchronizing and pre-caching data for users uh, who visit it at least once per 14 days. So and uh, time before you get uh, first first page loaded uh, f uh, on your first visit it can be pretty long, especially for packages with uh, lots of packages, and bugs, and so on. And uh, in the end, we are planning to work more on docs. Uh, by this uh, here, we mean documentation for developers, documentation about Oracle architecture, its AP. API for modules and and on integration tests uh, because we hit some some issues when some of the services changed the format of the data uh, they return and we had to adapt so we want to automatize uh, something to uh, warn us 
if there is some some issue. Mm, this is basically it. The package dashboard is already live uh, on package.fedora.infracloud.org, uh, <coughs> and we'll start uh, sending some some more announcements uh, and uh, some doing some more propagation for it once it's deployed on uh, on Fedora infrastructure OpenShift servers. Thanks for your attention, and uh, I guess it's time for questions. All right. Thank you, Františku, for taking us through that. Before we wrap this up, I'd like to mention one other teammate that worked on the project with us, and that is Lukáš Brabec, also from Fedora QE, responsible for creating, maintaining, and uh, developing the front-end bits. And here is a page with a couple of links. First of all, the link to the actual uh, dashboard, and then links to the repos where you can have a look for yourself or submit some RFEs or bug reports. Thank you for listening. And now if you have any questions, we are here to answer.